uh, I continue. How's my volume in the back? I just like to use my voice. Awesome. Uh, right. So, project two. What you guys have been working on for the last several weeks and been doing well on. If final submission, which is the only one that counts for March, to clarify, is due April 22nd, if at any point you know you are unclear about a question, come to my office hours, come to Professor White's office hours, or if not, none of them work for whatever reason, send me an email and I would be happy to book an alternative one. Okay? Um, so, these projects are, you know, designed relatively as big, longer labs, um, and you know, they draw interesting data. I hope you are uh, learning from them, um, and you are enjoying uh, what we're talking about. So, today we will be talking largely about sampling um, and uh, sample averages. So, this is going to be working off of the central here, which is what Professor White has been uh, talking about, um, has been talking about recently. Um, before I really kind of get started, you know, something that I always like to do before I get into a lecture is: Does anybody have any questions on material from yes, from Tuesday, or um, anything that's been talked about recently before we really? All right. Um, so, uh, very. So, what we're going to be talking about yeah, is sample averages. We're going to be talking about uh, empirical distribution today uh, and the limit theorem. So, the I uh, am so the distribution of all possible sample averages of a given size is called a distribution of sample averages. This will largely be the focus of lecture today, and we approximate it uh, by an empirical distribution. Does anybody want to, in their own way, don't worry about being right here. This is just something that I want to do. The classes, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that is okay. That's great. That, that, that's really good. I'm, not sure, I'm just going to rephrase what you said, but that, yeah, okay, that's great. So, the special limit theorem is the idea that if we are drawing um, from a another distribution, no matter the shape of the distribution, if we, uh, when we are continually drawing from that distribution and computing a mean from that distribution and plotting it, uh, what we'll be doing is producing a Bell shape. Um, and that this is something that we'll be focusing on. Um, and that the center of the mean of that uh, distribution will reflect the population mean, or be the population mean. Uh, and the, the standard deviation um, that, we'll, uh, that we will uh, compute from this um, say, uh, distribution of sample averages, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this formula here, uh, is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the sample size squared. This is something that we can use if we want to, for example, let's say, determine a good uh, sample size, and this is something that we'll be touching on at the end of lecture. Going off of uh, what you were just saying, uh, the central limit theorem is if the sample is large and drawn at random with replacement, then regardless of the distribution of the population, the probability distribution of the sample averages will roughly be normal, so it'll look like a bell shape. Uh, and the mean of that, um, and the mean will be equal to the population mean. And the standard deviation, uh, you'll be able to compute. Krish? Large and like my in my discipline, sociology, you typically, if you want your 
sample to approximate your uh, the population from which it is drawn, you want a bare minimum. That really depends on the experiment that you're trying to do. Obviously, with things where we're surveying a fancy population, we want higher levels of precision. It can get much harder. Um, so again, this is not some kind of set number. And I, I have to track it though. Does that answer your question, Chris? Um, so we have three distributions here. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick. Well, is that no? She has not built it in. Um, so one distribution that we have uh, is the population distribution, and I need to scroll down so that you can see it. Uh, and then another one of them. The popula uh, a population has an average of 70 and a standard deviation of 10. One of the histograms below is the empirical distribution of the averages of 10,000 random samples of size 100 drawn from the population. And I think this is something that we'll have to work on together as a discipline. So can anybody tell me which one is not? I think that's easier. So it would be A. It would not be A because that is reflective of that's the population distribution. Uh, and what we're what happens is as we're drawing in samples, we can do something that's called a white balance. That's where as we're drawing more samples, we can see the standard deviation increases. Um, and but the mean And so, when we are using uh, the distribution of sample averages, its standard deviation is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the standard deviation. And so, if we look at the population, what we have, um, this is average of the standard deviation. Uh, in, a, in a wide variety of circumstances, you can see things that have uh, size. So, um, on either side, like going off of what I was saying, we have one standard deviation of 10, one standard average on either side, and then this is Is that if you were to look at uh, this uh, distribution, 95% of all the means drawn from that large sample would be taken away. So, well, let's say you take it away. And that's where uh, we're trying to get now to get the ad hoc number. I'm going to give you guys a lot of. Just remember that I use this to guide the discussion. Here, I think I'll give people like one more minute. So Uh, when you're constructing, uh, so for 95% of all the samples, if you start at the population average, like I was saying, you're going to look on each side uh, with, uh, and look two standard deviations on both sides, you would find, you'll find the sample averages and 95% of the sample averages and the distance between the two is symmetric. Um, and so that's just kind of what 
And again, this diagram, what it's showing. All right, so the total width of the 95% confidence interval or the population average is equal to uh, uh, basically a constant, so four times the standard deviation of the sample average. We talked about how this, the standard deviation of the sample averages is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the sample size. I'm going to just turn actually to, I don't think we, I think I might have over, uh, gone uh, over what I was supposed to cover, but I'm just going to go through uh, part of the exercise for um, what we were supposed to cover uh, in our Jupyter Notebooks. Has everybody launched the session and pulled up uh, Lecture 21? All right, so what we're going to be working on today um, is the, uh, we're going to be using the United uh, data again. So what we're going to do right here is we are just reading in the data file and we're plotting that histogram of flight delay times. Then. Okay, so we've plotted the um, we've plotted the flight delay times. Right here, what we're doing is we are creating a variable called delays. Uh, we are just taking this from the United uh, table, and we are computing the pot of the mean of the uh, the mean and standard deviation of the delay from our uh, from our entire population of And we're returning it. What we can see is that the population mean is 16.6 .6 minutes uh, with a standard deviation of 39.4 minutes. What we see, and it's important to highlight here, we have a very uh, odd looking distribution. Normal distribution. Uh, it's very skewed. What we're doing now is we're creating a function in which uh, we are, which takes an argument sample size so that we can then uh, specify the number of, uh, basically the number of samples we're taking from that, uh, from the flight delays. And it will return the mean uh, of the delays based on the number that was specified. Sorry, guys. Thank you for speaking up. Better? Is it good enough? People in the back, good enough? Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Now, what we're doing is we are 
creating a new function called uh, 10,000 sample means. So, uh, and what we've done is we are creating an empty array called means. We're writing a for loop in which we are going to do 10,000 iterations. Uh, so we're going to compute uh, 10,000 new means from a particular sample size that we're specifying. So uh, uh, 100 for example, we're gonna take 100 uh, flight delays from United or 200. Uh, and then what we're doing is we're appending that uh, to our array uh, means. Here, I'm going too fast, just tell me to slow down because I haven't done this before in terms of going through the code like this with you guys. Is this, oh, is this a good speed? I can give everybody a moment to take this down. So then what we're doing is we're plotting this distribution. So to do this, we are, we are using that 10,000 means function that we just made. And then we are creating a table called sample means. And then we are just simply uh, computing or generating a histogram from that table. And then everything beneath it just reflects So the first thing that we're going to do with this new function, plot sample means, is we're going to give it uh, 100 samples. When we do that, this is the distribution that we get. I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit. So let's just highlight this. The distribution that we drew it from looks like this. Does that look normal to anybody? I want to see like everybody shaking their heads, being like, that's not normal. Okay, good. Um, but like I said, now that we have taken random samples from this distribution, in this case, the, uh, we specified uh, 100 random samples and then computed their mean and plotted it along a histogram and repeated this process 10,000 times. This is the distribution that we have. Now, what we see is that the population mean and the average sample mean, they are very similar, right? Does everybody see that? 16.65, The population standard deviation, which is drawn, is 39. The, sta uh, the standard deviation of sample means is 3.432. And that is based on a formula that I was just talking about. Compute the, compute the uh, standard deviation of sample means. It is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. What was the sample size that we just used? We used 100. What is the square root of 100? What is 39 divided by 10? All right. So now, instead of 100, I'm going to specify that we do uh, that our sample size is 400. When I do that, I see that my average of sample means is even closer than before. Obviously, my population standard deviation is still 39.48, and now my standard deviation is even getting narrower which means that my distribution, in terms of how wide it is, can't quite tell here, has gone, let's say, from here, I know people are saying, something 
And so that's reflected if you look at the x axis, you see, please. Of this. And now. That we're focusing on now is the sample standard deviation. And if we look at the x axis, so let's look at our x axis for when our sample size was 100, it ranges from 5 to 35. If we look at this one, it's 10 to 22.5. So, as I was saying, standard deviation is narrower, the shape of the distribution is changing, uh, in, that, in that standard deviation is shrinking. And that is reflected, as we can see, uh, on the x-axis. Is everybody doing okay right now? Yeah? All right. Okay. So what will happen then when I take a sample size of 100? We expect that our... Sorry? If I take a sample size of 900, will the, our x-axis... Will our standard deviation be smaller or larger than 1.96? Smaller, right. And so uh, if that's the case, our x-axis of this upcoming distribution should have a wider or narrower range than the one that we see right here. Great. Yeah. And that's what we see. All right. And so what we're doing right here is I've created an array using np.arrange. And I told Python that I'd like it to range between 100 and 900 with a step size of okay? I then created an empty array, and I'm iterating from n, uh, and I'm iterating through the sample size, starting with 100, going all the way up to 950, in increments of 50. What I'm then doing is I, for each one of these, I am using this function above that we created, that 10,000 sample means, so what I'm doing then is I'm going through 100 to 950, randomly drawing between 100 all the way up to 950 from the United delayed data set. And I am then computing 10,000 means for each. And I'm computing the mean and standard deviation Now, I'm computing the standard deviation and the population. Wait a second. I'm computing the uh, I'm computing the standard deviation of both. And I am a, or I'm computing basically the population, uh, excuse me, I'm computing the sample averages standard deviation and I'm creating a table. And this just highlights the fact that as I'm increasing the number of samples that I'm taking from, uh, from uh, the United uh, Delays data set, my standard deviation is decreasing. It's also illustrated by this graph right here. All right, does anybody have any questions before we move on? Krish? Sample means 
Just one second. Sample means ST. Yeah, it's computing. Well, it's computing the mean. And then, yeah, excuse me. It's computing the mean and the standard deviation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. So I'm actually realizing, so yeah, uh, and, and then what we're doing is, we're, sorry, I, I, I should have explained this better. What we're doing here on this table, Trish, is that we are, what we've done is we have computed the standard deviation and we've done that uh, and made it, uh, we've computed the, excuse me, the sample standard deviation. And then we've also just simply used the formula that I've talked about above and on the exact same thing. And we're just comparing them. And so what we can see is they're very similar based on the formula, uh, as well as just running simulation to compute it. All right. So our data is not always um, numeric in that it, uh, it can be sometimes, in this case, binomial or things like that, as zeros and ones. When it is, uh, the average is just simply reflected as a proportion based on summing the number of ones and dividing it by the length of the, uh, the, length of the data set. So if the population consists of ones and zeros, for example, yes, no, question, the population mean is the proportion of ones in the population. The sample mean is the proportions of proportion of ones in the sample. The total width. Right? Slides are a little messed up. Okay. So we talked about that. The total width. Size. Okay. So what we've also been touching on is the total width of the approximate 95% confidence interval for, uh, for a population proportion. It would be the same as the formula that I discussed earlier, except. Uh, Remember, it would just reflect a proportion. So between zero and uh, the, uh, the standard deviation of the sample averages divided by the square root of the sample size times four. The narrower the interval, uh, the more precise the estimate would be. So <clears throat> suppose you want a total width of the interval to be no more than 1%. Uh, how should you choose your sample? I'm just going to go through this. So what, uh, what we can do, this is something that uh, one of the scientists will do when we're talking about the portion of candidate. Um, they will need, uh, they'll look to determine how large the sample needs to be so that uh, their average would be within a certain proportion of air. Uh, and so uh, if we, uh, if we poll, uh, and randomly selected voters, um, and we would just ask if they support a candidate, for example, Michelle Wu, the current mayor of, of Boston, uh, we would just indicate if they do say they support, we would assign a one to this data set, otherwise we'd mark it with a zero. Uh, our sample mean here would just simply reflect the proportion. Uh, it would be the number of people who support um, divided by the sample. Uh, and then, uh, the uh, and then to determine uh, our 95% confidence uh, that uh, the uh, of our mean, uh, it would be uh, I'll just actually go through. Uh, I think it's best if I actually just go through the uh, yeah. I'll just go through the Jupyter notebook. So the, our 95% confidence interval is uh, between 0.5%. What, we're effect what we effectively need is a very large sample size. I think the calculation 
So if it were to be, uh, if we want to be confident, uh, if we want, uh, our, if we want to have no more than one percent error, we would use this formula four times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And what we can do is we can use algebra to uh, determine our sample size um, from this by simply uh, moving uh, the sample size to the left. So the square root of the sample size would be equal to four times the standard deviation of our sample averages now divided by 0 0.01, which reflects uh, uh, the range of error that we find to be acceptable, being 1%. And so uh, our, our, at most our standard deviation could, I mean, because of the fact that uh, this uh, proportion ranges from 0 to 1 at the largest extent, the standard deviation could be as big as 0.5 or half. Uh, and so, uh, what we can do is we can plug that into where our standard deviation, I mean, our, sample, uh, our standard deviation of sample averages. So that we have 4 times 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.01, reflecting our uh, the fact that we don't want to have greater than 1% of, uh, of error. And then we would square that. And the number that we get, go ahead, Chris. What we're trying to get at right now, what we're trying to get at right now is estimating an appropriate uh, what we're trying to get at is to be able to estimate an appropriate size sample so that we can have a one percent margin of error when we're polling. If we're doing that, we actually determined our standard deviation ourselves because it has to be a proportion, it would be at most at lar uh, largest uh, point 0.5 because it'd be between zero and one. And so then what we're saying is our sample standard deviation, uh, sorry, our, our standard deviation of sample average is to be no larger than point 0.5. Because of that, um, we would, our, the, the, our, the square root of our sample size would be equal to point 0.05 divided by what we want our margin of error to be, being 1%, and we'd multiply that by our constant of 4. Uh, to get the actual sample size, we would then just square that, and that results in 40,000, which means we would need to pull a lot of people uh, to be able to say that our poll is within one, uh, has a margin of 1%. Often, though, polls percent margin of error. When they are, then you need a smaller sample because of the fact that you're deeming a larger margin of error to be acceptable. So again, we're just going through a very similar, um, a very similar computation at plus minus three percent, which then results in an interval width of six percent. And again, we just plug these numbers in. And we see that if we want to have a poll that is plus or minus 3%, uh, then we would need to sample approximately, uh, well, 1,111 people or 12 people um, to get, uh, well, to be able to confidently say that our poll is within plus or minus 3%. Go ahead, Quentin. I'm not a pollster. Uh, I think that would largely be based on, you know, the way that I would approach that as a researcher is that we don't know what the intent of, uh, of how people are going to respond based on their experience and experience. Um, so, and I, and I also think within polls, obviously, you, 
So we're just going to turn back to we're just going to turn back to our Jupyter notebook. So here, what we're doing is we are creating an array of zeros and ones. Um, in which there are, uh, in this case, two ones within the population. And we're computing this, uh, we're also computing the standard deviation uh, of our population. Does everybody have this down? I don't want to rush anybody coding. I know you're trying to follow along and might shock you, but I was in your shoes only a few years ago, and uh, yeah, I don't like having to rush through things either. All right. So then, what we're doing is we are interested here in making a graph with the proportions of ones on the x-axis. And to do this, we're going to create a function uh, which will compute the our, which will compute the standard deviation. Uh, of our sample averages. Here, we are just going to iterate through, we're going to iterate through our total number. Uh, we're just going to iterate between uh, basically the length of the array that we just made. Um, uh, zero to to ten, up to but not including eleven, and we are going to uh, in this table we are going to put both our <clears throat> we are going to uh, basically uh, one one second guys. And effectively, what we're doing is we are just simply plotting our standard deviation of ones along um, based on the proportion of ones in in our data set. The whole point here is like as I was saying, it cannot uh, be greater than uh, our standard deviation here cannot be greater than 0. 0.5. The main take homes uh, basically from this lecture because I've gone through this a little quicker than I was hoping to. So why don't we just quickly kind of touch on a few of the important things here. <clears throat> so based on the central limit theorem for you, um, if you are drawing samples uh, from a distribution regardless of the shape, and you are computing the mean and then plotting those means, the distribution that you will get will be bell shaped. Uh, when you are creating this distribution of sample averages, the standard deviation will be equal to the population standard deviation divided by the sample size, uh, the square root of the sample size. This formula is useful because it enables you to estimate or determine the population standard deviation when you don't know it. And here, based on this graph, our standard deviation of, of distribution of sample averages is the population standard deviation divided by the square uh, root of, of our sample size. When we're interested in learning about the width of our confidence interval, 
uh, to compute this, it is four times the population standard deviation. Uh, it, is, it is four times the standard deviation of the sample averages. And we can use that in useful ways, such as determining sample size, especially when we are dealing with data uh, that is uh, zeros and ones, set allowing us to do the proportion. Does anybody have any questions? about any of the material that we've covered. This was a fairly short lecture. I'm gonna hang back. Yeah, go ahead, Krish. Yeah. So the number of ones, just, what we're using is we're using uh, NumPy ones, which is a function. Uh, I'd have to look, uh, and then NumPy zeros. We're creating an array with uh, two ones and then filling the rest with zeros. We're computing the standard deviation of that array. And then we're writing a function that bit is using uh, a similar method of creating zeros and ones of length 10, ensuring that based on the number of ones that we've specified, obviously the remainder will be zeros. From this, we're computing the standard deviation using NP dot S, well, NumPy standard deviation. And then we're going through uh, possible ones all the way up from zero to 10. We're creating a table. I think right now, just for the purposes of this, Professor White just limited it to an array of zero to 10 in size. So I, in this case, it's not rel it's not related to it, in this case, it would just be a smaller, yeah, sample. I, I, I think with uh, the example for Michelle Wu, it was extrapolating based on a much larger sample. And they're just generating a scatter plot showing the standard deviation in each of these instances based on the proportion of ones in the sample, showing that when there is, when the sample is half, basically half ones, the standard deviation is also at 0.5. No, it can't be, yeah. Quinn? No, no, uh, you're never gonna, and this is that empty one, empty No, 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 uh, and I would tell you, and I would highlight, I would use the reason why, hey guys, this might be on a, like a, you know, a side, let's get to know. So with that in mind, because we finished early on, let's have recording. If you guys want to come up and have questions, you know, I'm going to hang out here at 445, so I have to talk to you about homework, I was going to go to two. Uh, be happy to take those. Otherwise, have a great day.